What's up everybody? Oh lord, it has been a long 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 long, long time coming and making a video, but we're gonna be talking about the state of Genshin, as you can see by the title. Um but yeah, that's gonna be the today's topic. And don't worry, we're gonna get straight into this. Straight into it and all of it. And first thing I wanna talk about, um, with the state of Genshin is what a majority of players is doing, which is what seems like to be Genshin Whack-A-Mole, aka Wacka Waifu. C how many can you catch? Because if you go here, <laughs> just look. right now, uh, luckily, we have a nice dose of Husbando with Venti and Ayato. In your case, you, you want the Bard Boy or you want the. What would you even call Ayato? <laughs> <laughs> like the like the ninja killer, the nin like the ninja killer. Then you got Yunjin, and then your waifus literally are the four stars. Have a dose of husbando with some waifus on the side. You you feel me? But let's have a seat here and let's get the talking. Uh, that is not what I meant to click on. But basically, right now in Genshin, I know I've been gone for a long time. Let's excuse that part. <laughs> But right now in Genshin, especially as someone who was came back now after being gone for like about, I was gone for mo like multiple weeks. Like, but that's here nor there. With Genshin right now, we are in a state of collect characters, and that is all. And you might have a differing opinion. You might feel a different way. But right now, I would say the main thing that is making Genshin Genshin is the characters. And yes, we got Yelan and I don't know if I even said that right. And Kuki Shinobu, both on the line for the next patch, whether that's 3.0, 2.7, whatever the fuck they want to go for. Right. But the key and uh, the key ingredient to all of this is that. That is their cash cow. Getting characters out, right? And it's clear as day they're not going to stop with Yelan. They're going for whatever makes people's eyes pop out of their sockets. And I have no problem with that. Yamigo, I really wanted her. I couldn't get her because a lot happened that week. We're gonna, I'm going to make a video talking about me. So this is not that video though. But basically, Yamiko came out. We've seen a lot of people, they were freaking hyped. They were hyped as soon as she got announced. Leading up to it, more hype. Then they said writing was coming out that patch. Kokomi, people are hyped for those characters as well. So, you know, I wanted those characters. Like, well, not Kokomi, of course. <laughs> I'm a barber. I, uh, listen, 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 listen. Stand up. Listen here. Listen here. Barbara Maine. To the day I die. Back to back to the point though. Raiden and uh Yai. First of all, Electro is a good. I, I almost said Electro is a good element, <laughs> but Electro is a pretty fun element. Let me say, as a, as someone who played Beto, I would say it's fun. But beyond that, those characters in themselves, Raiden and Yai, have so much story significance going up through Inazuma and on top of that are just cool looking characters and have amazing designs that it would make sense why people would go for those characters but as we keep going forward we're noticing a trend now and yes it was like this before in the first year of Genshin but going into the second year of Genshin we're noticing this even further with double banners now you know and them doing double banners they are now hinging on this as their plan, I would say, until they find a way to fix Endgame. And that's the second problem, I would say, with Genshin right now, is the Endgame. The Endgame right now is completely, I mean completely doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo buns dog water. And the reason I say it's doo-doo buns dog water is because if you want to be real, the only end game still in April 2022 
is Spiral Abyss. Or actually, are we in year two against you? I just thought about because I said year one. Never mind. But back to the point. Spiral Abyss is the only thing that's actually in-game content. And the thing about it is, is that this resets, so they're constantly updating Spiral Abyss and, con and constantly changing Spiral Abyss. And with new enemies always being added in, that it gives it variety. But if you've already played Spiral Abyss like me, you have no interest in playing Spiral Abyss again. And the reason you have no interest in playing Spiral Abyss again, even though you get you know 600 primo gems, which is barely fucking anything, but you know what I mean. Even though you get primo gems every two weeks. It's just not worth the mind-numbing hell that you go through just playing. It doesn't make sense. And so, that is, I would say, the main issue that we're facing ourselves. And they have two ways of fixing this, I would say. And after playing a game like BDO and playing other games, surprisingly, over this time, I've been playing a bunch of other games. But... After playing so many other games, I've noticed that there's ways to get people hooked on games and ways of actually going back and making the game even more interesting than what we first did. And playing Genshin, I've noticed a lot of similar things in other games, but also what makes Genshin fundamentally different. First thing I think Genshin needs to do immediately, whenever they have the chance, please, please, can we have a new weapon type? We, I wouldn't say it's necessary because the weapons we have right now are good, but a new weapon type would be amazing. I, I, I like, I don't know what type of weapon to go for because we have claymores. Uh, wait, I forgot she's a claymore. We have bow users, catalyst users, which are like spell casters, and pole arm and sword, I believe. Which is, I think it's five. But that in itself. Yeah, see, five. But that in itself, there could be more. Like, look how many elements we have. And we're still missing an element, which is Dendro. There's no Dendro characters. Like, none at all. <laughs> like, but, you know what I mean? We have Dendro. We're missing Dendro. And honestly... A new weapon would be extremely nice to go along with Dendro. Like, I think that would be extremely smart. Whenever they release Chasm, that they release, you know, a Dendro character with a new weapon. Let's say Scythe or Dagger or, you know, random, you know, blue random. Just a longer sword. Uh, well, that's Claymore. Never mind. Take that back. But <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. Like daggers. You know what I mean? You could go for. Because right now, I would say we have sword, which is fast, decent speed. Pole arm, which is faster, I would say, than sword. Claymore, which is the slower weapon. Bow, which is the more precise weapon. And then Callus, which is also a precise weapon. I would say we have three wide swinging normal weapons, right? Two unique, like, weapons that function on you know in their own little ways i would say the next weapon i would like is something along the lines of that like let's say we have a weapon type that is a mixture of like weapons but throwables daggers you see what i'm trying to say daggers and daggers can actually be kunai as well because kunai are like a type of short knives so you know you can still use kunai and it would make it to where you have this fast weapon type. Or actually, dual blades. Like, chain blades. Like, blades. Are they called Kusari? I think they're called Kusari. I think I heard someone say it. But, like, chain blades. Kind of like the Blades of Chaos if you ever watch God of War. But basically, I think that would make this game extremely, extremely interesting. Because then, we'd have a new weapon. But also... I think of revamping of like the way weapons and the way you get weapons in itself would be awesome. Yes, the weapon manner, like of course they're probably gonna keep the weapon manner. But I think having a free way, not just through limited time events. Cause that's the way everything is ran right now, is through a limited time event. And 
that's the way I don't want it to be. And the reason I don't want it to be this way is because it makes it to where everything in the game is kind of just, oh, other than like new areas, like Chasm, as, as I'm sitting on the Chasm screen, other than new areas, everything else is just gone. And it might come back in a different patch, but it's usually gone. And I think that is one of the fundamental issues is that like you have these story quests, but once you do them, gone. You can't do the story quest again. And that's understandable. Why would you be able to do quest again? But I think, I think if we had like, I don't know what the hell this event is. So I can't say what this event is about. But if we had certain events, like let's say, you know how they have like these things where like a new boss comes out. And they'll tell you like, oh, new boss, Chasmatic Serpent. Oh, new boss, Golden Wolf Lord. Oh, new boss, Ace Daha. You see what I'm trying to say? You know how they have these new tabs? Instead, why don't we make it to, like, for example, the first week these bosses come out, they're raid bosses. You know what I mean? And they have stronger HP. They drop more materials. They drop even experience books. Let's say we do stuff like that. Or, let's say every week, a new boss goes on the raid menu. And we're gonna have, we can have a world boss, like this. Like, let's say, child, senior, one of them, you know, what, Boreas, yeah, that's his name, Boreas. Or, you know, Age Daha, or, you know, God, I forgot his name, the one from Monset. But, but we can have, like, one of those world bosses and one of the, like, you know, 40 resin bosses. And we can have, like, for example, of course, it will offer less for the 40 resin boss. But we can, let's say for those bosses, like, one of those bosses go on, like, a raid menu, like, the week. And then, basically, for that, you know, small duration, they are on, like, this special, you know... Let's say hyped up juice. <laughs> That's a weird analogy. But some hyped up juice. And they're stronger, have more HP, you know, but then they also drop more materials. And I don't think they should increase the resin cap for these type of bosses. Just keep it how it is. But I think that this will make it extremely interesting. Like, for example, one like you do one boss. Ooh, or like how they do it like with the discounts. One discount, like one boss, like whatever boss you choose, that would be a raid boss. And that boss, depending on which boss you choose, gives you special materials and extra materials from that boss. Like, let's say you get, um, let me open my thing because I want to get this right. <laughs> let's say you get, um, where is it? Is it in here? Yeah. Let's say you get, uh, Devalin's Plume. But then you also can get, you know... An extra, well, you already get this, but like, let's say you get like four or five of these, right? Since it's stronger, but then you also get like two dream solvents. I think anybody will be willing to do any boss in the game for that amount of materials. Yeah, you might be saying, why would they give away free materials? It will be an incentive to play and level up your characters. That will be the reason. You see what I'm trying to say? So, I think there would be a lot of ways they could go with this route. But the main thing is, is we have two issues being not having an end game, a solid end game, Like a real solid foundation for an end game. The only pillar being Spiral Abyss and getting new content. And then, the other issue being Waifu Collector. Um... What's going to happen eventually when we get to, let's say, I don't know, um, roughly December of this year, right? December of 2022, we're going to have so many characters, and with dual banners now, we're going to have so many characters released. What are we actually going to do about, like, all the characters releasing? You see what I'm trying to say? Like, it's a major problem right now and i think that it just needs to be fixed and i don't want to be the negative nancy because i think there's been a lot of negative talking in the Gitcher community but let's be genuinely honest here we like it, we're in our second year of genshin genshin came out i believe september 28th i, I think i remember this on the dot september 28th 2020 if i am correct might have been 2020 
I don't know. But in that regard, right? How are we almost done with our second year of this game? It feels like. And we are literally like no end game. No end game at all. That is that is mind boggling. So I think right now the thing they could do is take a step from BDO, Black Desert Online, if you don't know. Which is go back and revamp the characters. Some dude said it. I do not know the YouTuber, and I'm very sorry. Because if I did remember you, I would say your name right now. But some YouTuber said it such a long time ago. And this was like months and months ago. But one one thing they could do to make these characters interesting is take that dilute, like tie it into lore. Delusions. Delusions are a form, of, like a malformed version of um, visions. They're like a messed up, twisted version of like power. And... You know, that's, this is theory territory, but it's like the abyss, like the abyssal version of a vision. That's that's more my, that's more theory right there than actual lore. But, you know, you would have the visions which are from Celestia, and then like delusions which are from the Fatui slash the abyss, right? That abyssal nature. And I think you could like have, let's say, I want to say like, uh, I wouldn't say like a whole new version to summon for, but like, let's say like they drop new events for characters, right? A, sto a Zhongli story part three. Not, okay, Zhongli is a bad character. I'm going to use Ito because Ito is in front of me. But Ito part two of his story quest, right? They bring Ito back. But here's where they do it. Ito has changed, right? He has different clothes on. He looks different. He's using a new power. And... They could have it to where that would be an alternate version. And, like, you'll do, like, for example, you'll go into here. Let, let's say you go in here, right? And there will be, like, an event. Anybody who has Ito, right, already, you know, would be able to get him for free. But you would have to, you can, like, summon for him, let's say. And, basically, you would be able to do this event, get a free version of this character that is now stronger, updated, and feels better or worse depending on how they do that but that would be like my idea of it having newer like kind of how like honkai or dragon ball legends has their duplicate characters and not all the time are these duplicates worse or bad like worse or better sometimes they're just more they're just you know also a viable option and so you could have both of these characters be good but they be the same character, and I'm not saying they probably will do this for free, but I'm adding that part in there because that would be also a great way of making it free for those people who already have the character, and then they would just be getting basically kind of like an upgraded version. They're probably going to do it the way all gotchas do it, though, which is summon for it, which sucks. But that is kind of the video I've done, sort of what my ideas. I initially had a sheet. I had written out for all this, but I kind of wanted to free ball this because that's how I like all my videos. I like free balling my videos, but also I believe that there's many pathways you could take this. Like use literally to take my fingers, all five of one of my hands, and you to multiply that by 50. That's how many pathways I feel that they have with their end game. And the reason they have so many pathways is because they haven't done anything. But also that's what leads to so much potential. So if you understand that, you understand what I've said, and I know this video has been very long, very, you know, a lot. There's been a lot to sit through. I've been just kind of sitting here, and you've been just li listening to me talk. Um, But if you have listened to this point, thank you for listening. I am back. I'm going to be trying to make more content. I'm going to be making a video explaining where the hell I've been. But, you know, that is the video. Um, What do you think they could do with the Genshin, you know, in game? What do you think they could do with the character system? And what do you think can happen with the character system? I think adding a new weapon will be very interesting. I think, honestly, revamping the characters will be very interesting. And I think adding, you know, more in-game, more permanent content. Let's say, like, Haku. Like, Haku. What is it called? Haku in Iki? 
I think it's called Hok Haku and Iki. That event where you use like two people and you have to switch. Like you use two characters, right? Let's say you use two characters. But then you have to switch to another team and you only can use those two characters. And then you gotta switch to another team. If they added that actually as a permanent mode, as a gauntlet arena, right? Like somewhere like actually like on the map, like in an actual place that you would actually go to. You know how like Spiral Abyss is in Mondstadt. For example, every time a new region came out, we added a new permanent type, like not gauntlet mode, but a new permanent type mode. That would be amazing and interesting. But that's just the final thoughts of the video. Um, see you. Have a nice day and bye.